Okay, I'm going to need a new character sheet. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um... I mean, okay, I'm, so uh, what, top, what top of door are we talking? Uh, so the door's quite a thick, sort of heavy set wood. Um, and it appears to be locked. Well, I'm going to try to kick it down with my large rabbit leg. Okay, but, roll me a raw strength check. So you're saying this door is wood? Yes. I mean, I'll before you try first. Before, but yeah, before you try anything, that is a 19 plus 3. Okay, you hit the door. It doesn't budge. Um, but can you make me a... It would be a constitution saving throw. As a loud, for, a, a loud uh, deafening noise cracks from the door and threatens to knock you backwards. 15. 15. Okay, you pass the save, so you're going to take half damage. And that is four. Four points of damage. Uh, four points of thunder damage as you are blasted away from the door. Hey, look, I started this game at two health and I'm back at two health again. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the mine, presumably, you're still unconscious and will be for 1d4 hours. I probably put myself down to uh, two health. Yeah, I, I feel like... One hour. Mm. I'm... Okay, oh, first things first, I'm going to loot the dead alchemist. Or the dead. Uh, oh, the dead wizard. Man. Sure, you get some assorted spell components that would be worth about 100 gold pieces, including a diamond worth 50 GP. Oh, cool. Oh, and a wand. And the you have no idea what it does. <laughs> and a what? A wand. No, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to vote before we try to break into this house, we should probably do a short rest. Let the mine get back up. We can heal a bit. Yeah. That, that is fine. Although I have, I do have a question mm. while that's going on. Uh, with one for one twelve, does that always appear in the sky, or does it appear where you came? Four one two was the World War Two. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it appears directly in the sky overhead of the caster. Which mean it does mean if you're like in cover of some sort, it is still very useful. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps you have uh, access to a suggestion spell. Yeah. To make someone else do it for you. Can you can always plant these ones on people, that sort of thing. You know, you don't have to use them. <laughs> Wing this stick around. Yeah, give it a kid and say, hey, run into that market and ring. No, that's, uh, <laughs> that's probably not a good idea. No, no, that's what you do to the town guard. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So we're taking a short rest? Yes, we're taking a short rest. Have a short in the massa? <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't have a choice. Yeah. All right. For which I'm going to burn one of my hit die. Mine, no, you are back I... up and conscious. You can burn some hit die if you want. Uh, something can I still I use never... from the rest? No. Something I didn't realize from taking it, I do technically have one hit die for, uh, for a monk level. Yeah, you can use that. I have... I have one that is much better than the other one. Yeah, feel free to use that one first. Um, reason you can't do Song of Rest is you're technically unconscious until the end of the short rest. Um, so unless unless the the Song of Rest is you going ah, in like mind straight, form. The straight roll, or do we add our constitution? To uh, it? I mean, I think it's just a straight roll, but I might be wrong. Okay. I think it's just a straight roll. We did establish ours dramatically posing as ours dying. Yeah, no, that's 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 not going to be enough. Yeah, there needs to be an active use of Song of Rest. Oh, that's Otherwise, we really would find a way to uh, just strike a pose. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you do add your I constitution imagine. modifier, sorry. So go ahead and add that. Great, that's an extra zero. That's an extra one. Hilariously, if your constitution modifier is negative, you would subtract it. <laughs> yeah, Makes it so fun. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I take it we are counting the short rest as being done. Yep, I think so. Yeah. You're all back up. Okay, okay. I'm. Make... I'm going to stand a hundred feet away from the door, hide it behind a tree, and I'm going to cast fireball at the door. 
Okay, cast Firebolt at the door. Uh, the door's hit points are probably a little bit higher than a Firebolt, so you might need to do it a couple of times, but you can absolutely give that a go. Um, yeah, you're far enough away. You're not going to get hit by the, the Thunder Wave from it. Um, that, that was the reason for 100 feet. And I, I don't think you're going to have a problem hitting literally like the barn do a barn door. Um, so it's a resilient object that is large, so yeah, it's got 27 hit points, so it's going to take a little bit of time. But it just, it just takes time. You've got, you, like, nothing is stopping you from recasting it. So it's going to, it's going to crumble into uh, burnt, uh, burnt charred wood in a matter of time. I'm going to say it takes maybe about five minutes. It's nothing too major. And while he's and doing this... Says it's nearly done, I will use control flames to uh, put the fire out so it stops burning. And while they are doing this, I'm going to uh, get the barrel of uh, of wands okay. and like seal it back up and start using one of the many leather shafts I have to begin to rig it so I can carry it on my back as well. Okay, yeah, you can you can sort of start to sort of wrap that around you so you're carrying a barrel full of wands. Would anyone like to cast any more uh, before you head on in? No, cast. Yeah. Basically, it's apparently a good advantage to 16 strength, and that's a lot of carry weight. Yeah. Uh, okay, so roll me, roll me a D1000, please. Uh, can I be in the building first, please? You can run straight into the building if you want. Uh, I have to get, I have to take the barrel off of off of my back. I have to open it back up. <laughs> you could just hand a few out to the mime and just say, "Here." Hey. I know, but like they're all in there. I have to run away. I have. I have. I do ask that you have the destroy the world one do something different. Oh no, just it's just gonna case. it's gonna end the entire stream series. That's it. <laughs> the, the, the dice the dice is set. No. <laughs> I mean oh wait, it doesn't say how it destroys the world. It, it could just bring about an apocalypse we have to try and stop. I mean you've already got one apocalypse. What's two <laughs> to deal with? I mean, this is D&D. I expect seven before we hit level 20. <laughs> We've had first apocalypse, yes, but what about second apocalypse? <laughs> and don't forget 30s. That's true. <laughs> that is 509. 509. Amazing. How many spells what? have you got, the mime? Uh, spells I have. Uh, okay, I burned like... one disguise of okay. Like individual spells how many... or a spell slot? Individual yeah. spells. Uh, is that including cantrips? No, not including cantrips. Um, yeah. Uh, that's just sucking a little burner slot. Yeah, that's six then. Six. Can you roll me 1d6, please? Oh, no. This is going to be a full spell casting. Spell. Luckily, none of my spells are damaging. Worst case scenario, I, should, I, make, I tell someone to clock like a chicken or something. This is going to be amazing. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Uh, that's a five. That is a five. What is the fifth spell? On my character sheet, that is suggestion. Okay. What level is suggestion? Le Suggestion's level two, right? No. Level two. Okay. This isn't good. This is going to be really interesting. I'm going to roll and randomly determine. So you no longer have suggestion. Okay. <laughs> You have instead the fifth level spell, Anti-Life Shell. <laughs> 509, Magic. Somehow you forget one of your spells, but you get a replacement. Determine randomly which spell you lose. You get one spell three levels higher, also random and uh, unstable. Oh, which is... This is going to be lovely if I can do that as a wall. Write it down. Write it down. I've written it down. Because I can cast high level spells with my spell slots. It's yeah, I... no level spell You have slot. to have a slot that can cast a spell to be able to cast it, remember? Yeah. Uh, you mean like my pack slots, which have no level? Your pack slots do have a level. That level increases as you go on. Bit. Right, yes. Yeah, I actually will say you can probably use your level 2 spell slot to cast this. I'm going to say, yeah, when you get one of these, you can use it. You can only get one each. 
<laughs> I will say, because otherwise this is going to get ridiculous. Like, this is designed to be a wild magic surge table, not, like, a consistent wand. But, yeah, you can each cast this once, I think, to gain one upgraded, massively upgraded spell, and you can use whatever spell slot you lose to do it. So if it was a first level spell, you can use a first level spell to cast the spell but that you get. there is also the downside that it's unstable. It is unstable, yes. Uh, can you note down next to it, actually, uh, Bree, that it is unstable and remind me when you cast that? Because I'm going to have to decide oh, what that means yeah, yeah. when we get to it. For those unaware, by the way, anti-life shell, uh, a shimmering barrier extends from you in a 10-foot radius moving with you. The barrier lasts for up to an hour. It is a concentration spell. The barrier prevents an affected creature from passing or reaching through. Um, an affected creature can cast spells or make, ra make attacks with ranged or reach weapons through the barrier. If you move so that an affected creature is forced to pass through the barrier, the spell ends. Basically, no one can There's reach not many it. There's not many reach weapons that are 15 feet. Uh, well, apart from the long, long oh, glaive. No, no, they need to <laughs> the long, long glaive. I mean, there are some feats that'll give you a bit more reach. Also, stack on other people can be inside the barrier. Um, it's just that you basically... Uh, oh no, actually... Yeah. Uh, other creatures can be, but only undead and constructs can be inside with you. <laughs> <coughs> okay, I th but I think at least for now we've done our, our wand fun. Yeah, no one else is casting that one to get a, get a spell upgrade? Uh, Fuck it, I will. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, can you... Well, how many spells have you got? And roll me a D whatever. Okay, roll me a... Oh. A d8 and tell me which spell you lose. Okay, that is a... I lose a cattle. That's a first level spell, right? Yes. Okay, so you're going to get a fourth level spell back. Amazing. You have Leoman's secret chest. <laughs> uh, you hide a chest and all its contents on the ethereal plane. That actually could be extremely helpful for you. Oh, don't worry the mime. I'm sure you can get suggestion back next uh, next level up. So that's neat. Uh, what about shinies? Is shinies going to try it? No. <laughs> Shiny enough. flex the spells they've got. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, yeah. Okay, so that was 509 magic. Okay, so we should probably get in and start ransacking the, the place of this dead wizard. All right. So the door is open, you all step inside. And this place is have... cluttered. It is absolutely packed of things. I have one important question. Yeah. My um, my magic carpet, does it basically get double the carry weight of the standard magic carpet because it's two of them stitched? One and a half times. The stitching is not one great, but one and a half times. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, that's fine. Uh, each of you roll me a perception check and I'll show you what sort of <coughs> items you can find in here because it's it's packed with items. Like, they, they're falling off of shelves. Uh, they're covering the floor. Uh, this person really has, like, previously hoarded magical items and various other knickknacks and trinkets. Uh, that is a... 19 plus 4, 23. Okay, 23. Uh, see, this time we could roll the magic items. There. Oh, it would help if I stopped clicking the wrong thing to turn around target to my dice, because there's a dog sleeping in front of them. Um, 16. <laughs> 16. Okay, so I'll start with uh, what what you see, um, Belladonna. You see a mummified goblin hand, a whistle made from gold-coloured wood, a tooth from an unknown beast, a dragon's bony talon hanging from a plain leather necklace, a fan that, when unfolded, shows a sleeping cat. Okay, shinies, what do you find? You find a rectangular metal device with two tiny metal cups on one end that throws sparks when wet, an old key, and a small idol depicting a nightmarish creature that gives you unsettling dreams when you sleep near it. And what was your perception check, the mime? I'll be a German no. <laughs> Nine, okay, so you get a cameo carved in the likeness of a hideous person. <laughs> yes. No. Just to uh, make this a bit easier on myself, uh, I'm going to run through short rests for those three items. Okay. 
Uh, so you're... I mean, none of these are attunable. Oh, okay. But I'll say that, but... Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's short rest to identify. They've all been identified 100% when I told you what they did. <laughs> what they were. Oh, it's as far as it goes. That's okay. as far as they go. They're trinkets. You're, you're in the, sort of, you're in the, essentially like the entrance hall of this guy's collection. He's going to keep his finer stuff elsewhere. And while you're in here, what you can also see is there is a ladder that goes up. So this is kind of like, yeah, like a, an old windmill. There's a ladder going up to a second floor. And there's also... Uh, I say a trap door, but it's it's just a, a yeah a leverable door in in the floor um, that clearly goes down to somewhere as well. I'm going that way. Which one, up or down? Down. Down. All right, you're going I'll, down. I'll try going up. You try going up. Okay, which way is the mime going? Wait, question. What did you say? Hey, the which um, the going? Sideways. trinket does. The the trinket that you've got it just looks hideous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I um, follow Belladonna, but I just sort of uh, jerk as if I'm being pulled by an invisible rope. <laughs> okay, sure, that sounds great. Uh, okay, we're going to start with downstairs. Right, it is. A little, it's quite dank uh, and dark down here. Um, there's a sort of a bit of a breeze coming in, so clearly there's some like further chamber down here. Uh, do you have dark vision? I forget. Uh, I have Devil's Eye. Of course, you've got Devil's Eye. Well, you, you were able to see fine then. Uh, so down here, it, again, there's tons of piles of just random crap, right? There's pa papers piled everywhere with diagrams on them that look like <coughs> they look arcane and, and occult. There's a lot of bibbly candles that are unlit. There's uh, jars that look like they might contain various bloods of various creatures, all different colors. Um, and uh, further away, there's a plinth. And on the plinth is a small wooden box. It looks quite ornate. Um, and on there is the picture of a, well, it's a figure wearing a crown. And holding in like a scepter. I mean, Shiny isn't going to notice that. You just said ornate. They're just going to notice it's shiny. Okay. And being shiny. Okay, you've got a, a, a nice ornate box, uh, and I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, uh, up to up to the up to the upstairs, where um, yeah, it's, it's quite wait, bright wait, up wait, here. Wait. It's quite light. Uh, the mime, the mime said they were acting like they were like being pulled on by a rope. Hmm. Once Belladonna gets to the top and sees this, Belladonna is going to start pulling up an invisible rope to try to get the mind to move faster. <laughs> just like, yeah, just like, come on! <laughs> okay, I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay, Bri? <laughs> I think this is my second beer, so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, you you get upstairs. It's actually it's not too it's not too cluttered up here. Um, there's a few things scattered around. There's a, a few ivory chess pieces, um, but there's also a bed and a book. Um, the the wizard was clearly reading uh, at some point, and there's this little display by a sort of by a window that used to be it used to be where the mechanism for the windmill would have been sticking outward. So now now it's just a nice ornate window. A lot of sunlight's coming in, and it's just hitting this. Um, well, it's a wand uh, <laughs> that is that is just there, like. Uh, little, propped up on a little, on a little bit of a uh, little wooden display stand in a velvet box. I mean, I'm assuming, given the this is mo one that he actually knows what it does. So I'm going to grab that wand. Okay, you hold a wand; it immediately feels magical. But then they're wands; they they often do. Uh, yeah. I'm also going to check out the book. Okay. So the book is. The book is intensely erotic. Um, it is, it is a, a collection of erotic short stories, and uh, <laughs> uh, one, one about a, uh, a milkmaid. I, mean, I just wanted to see like, what the book was. I just, I'm not going to read through 50 it. 50 Staves of Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> 50 Staves of Gandalf the Grey. God damn it, use your inspiration so I can give you more. Um, yeah, I'm going to hand the book over to the mime and go, do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Are there any stories in this about uh, lizards with big tits? 
<laughs> it is not the lusty Argonian maid, but you are also two floors down, so you have no idea they've got this erotica. I, I've got no idea. I'm literally asking the out of character. <laughs> yeah, it's not the lusty Argonian maid. Uh, yeah. I mean, you said it's a collection of short stories. It could be in there. It could. It could. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to point the wand out the window. Okay. Roll me one D100, please. Ooh, a D100? This is different. Actually, don't do that. Yeah. Nothing happens. Nothing? Yeah. Sorry, this one requires attunement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one, though. Uh, yeah, so... Any, any, anything else you'd like to have a look at here? You get the feeling that you've probably got the 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 items that are this guy's pride of his collection, because they're the ones that have been on displays. You know, they the the rest have been kind of discarded all over the place. Like, you get the feeling he's probably got some slight hoarding tendencies, and he's just like been piling up things over time. Yeah. So oh. after killing him and, and robbing him, um, what would you like to do? I mean, how far is... Like, like I, I realize this place is probably a bit far from the town. How far is it? It's about a mile away. I mean, if How anything, far away is the Tabaxi town? It's about five more along. What, 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 I'm, what I'm getting at is this guy's obviously a kook and nobody likes to interact with him. This is at well, least not now for he's now... Dead. <laughs> this is at least for now a good place to hold up for a bit. Okay, so you're going to take a little, a little bit of a break and uh, maybe attune to that uh, attune to that wand. I'm, I'm at like perhaps probably more in the long term, depending if we want to stay in this area for a bit. Oh, taking control of it uh, as yeah, a, a like a base operation. of operation. That yeah, makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. <clears throat> it's good to have defenses for when they inevitably send a party of adventurers to kill you. I mean, would be nice if we had a door, but uh, that's no longer a thing. I mean, I've heard you can buy doors. <laughs> or, or, or you can disguise yourself as a, a rabbit oak and uh, steal one. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, I had a slightly different idea there. Oh? How about we disguise you as a, a lovely old high-ranking dwarf mafia member and uh, get you to steal the door? <gasps> Uncle Gianni. Ooh. Yeah, you you've acquired you've acquired property, um, including a lot of a lot of random trinkets that don't appear to have any magical value. Uh, two magical items, a book of smut, and uh, unfortunately, a subscription to the Telegraph, which is it's going to prove nigh impossible to cancel. But that's just what happens when you get on the property ladder, anyway. <laughs> so. Um... I don't. We didn't uh, interact with the wizard for an hour, did we? Uh, no, you've not interacted with the wizard for an hour. Why? <laughs> well, if it was an hour, I could have um, been able to copy his mannerisms perfectly. No, no. You, well, unless you want to copy his mannerism of being fucking dead. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, thankfully, I can copy his voice. So. You could always weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, no. Um, well, I suppose when I get suggestion back, I could just just keep endlessly suggesting. He seems a bit quiet, but I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, yeah, you'd be able to suggest that when you get suggestion back, if you get suggestion back. I mean, it's your choice whether you do. Spot, but... You just got to level up. And, yeah. It, uh, it, you, yeah, you got a base of operations. So, what's the plan? Well, I mean, that door thing is important, and I do like Shiny's plan. Okay, you want to get a door. Did I mention this was going to be done from the Tabaxi village? Oh, yeah, no, I perfectly understood that. Okay, Good. sure. I, I do love the idea of festering a, an all-out combat between the Tabaxi village and the Dwarven village. Absolutely, I'm going to have to do some very interesting accents. This is going to be great. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so are you heading there now, or what? 
Okay, so you've all had a short rest in which, uh, first of all, um, Belladonna, you've attuned to the Wand of Wonders. How many items are you attuned to now? Because you've got the ring, which actually I don't know I'm if that attuned. required it. I don't believe you said it did. No, I don't think that one did. Okay, so you've got you've got the, the Rod of Wonders, the Wand of Wonders even. Um, actually, is, is that all you've got? I'm trying to think. I believe that's all I got. Oh, that's all right then. We're not going anywhere near the limit on that one. Okay, and at the same time, Shinies, oh, you are oh. checking out that ornate box. So presumably the first thing you do is open it. Now that I'm a two the one, what does it do? Wonder Wonders, every time you use an action, you roll 1d100 and there is an effect on the page for the Wonder Wonders is what happens. Has seven charges. Uh, you expend one charge to choose a target within 120 feet and then roll 1d100 to see what happens. Spell save DC is 15 if you need it. Um, okay, so inside what you find uh, you find a smaller box, but it's made of, it's sort of made of cardboard, um, and it's got a tattered edge, um, and it's uh, it's about sort of that size. <clears throat> and you pull it open, and inside is a deck of cards. I'm going to look at these cards. Okay, so they have on them. Um, well, you're familiar with like tarot, right? Is this a taroka deck? Of sorts. Okay. I'm sure there are many things in it. That's one way of putting it, yeah. Ah, uh, found that. <laughs> Do shinies realise they found that? I don't think shinies would know it. Uh, would would shinies know it? What what would make you think shinies would know it? Ah, uh, shinies is a bit too new in the world of uh, magical items to know what that is. Would, would Belladonna know it? You'd have more chance. As a wizard, Belladonna. I'd allow you to make an arcana check to identify it. Belladonna did go would to a magic. The, uh, would so. the mom know because they hold, hold do on, have hold proficiency on. with... Hold on. Sorry. Sorry, what was that, Belladonna? Uh, Belladonna did, did go to a magical school for years, so... Yeah, I'd allow an intelligence... A uh, history check. Intelligence history check to identify that from your notes from back when you were studying. And what was that, Brie? The uh, mom has proficiency with gaming tools, if that helps. I like the idea of identifying the deck of many things from being particularly good at poker. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, with a 15, 15, I think, yeah, you probably would recognise what it is. And or, I don't say a thing. Perhaps you don't, you don't necessarily know how it mechanically works 100%, but you know it is extremely dangerous. I'm not saying a thing. I'm sure the you mime know, will... I don't know how this works. I'm not going to metagamer, but I am going to keep that and I am going to randomly draw from time to time. Okay. Bear in mind, when you randomly draw, you have to deter you have to say how many cards you're drawing yeah, beforehand. I, I'll just treat that as decides to draw X amount of cards. Okay. That doesn't realize what they're doing. But it's just by uh, up. I mean, you'll realize very quickly. Oh yeah, that's what I said. Uh, up until I've done it the first time, we're just going to count it as not trying to meta game. Mm. I'll just find a point where it makes sense for me to draw. Okay. So yeah, add on to this... your inventory the deck of many things. Is this a regular deck or the greater deck? Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to ask. Well, actually, it kind of depends if Shiny's even shown you this. Um, <laughs> as to whether you'd know. Uh, you wouldn't, Shiny's, you wouldn't have any reason to count the cards, I think, because you don't know about it. You don't know there's a greater version. If you have shown it to the others, they might ask reasonably. I mean, I wouldn't. I'm keeping quiet about it. Uh, not for the time being. No. Okay. So the others, you don't know. That uh, so, uh, Chinese has. You, you keep track of how many there are, and we'll go from. Yeah, I know. I know how many are. How many there are. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So, what is the plan for today? Well, we got to instigate a war and get a new door. Two very important tasks: start a war, get a door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you don't know is that these are the exact same tasks. I, I can't wait to see how you do this. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, walk me through it. Walk me through it. What's the plan? Uh, Ruza, or sorry, Shinies, this was your plan. So why don't you oh. eat or explain it? As Shinies. How many moves? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Get out of character, so we actually know what we Get need. Get out of character. We need... The mine. 
to disguise themselves as Don Gianni as best they can. Okay. Like, look like kind of a tall dwarf, but... <laughs> and uh, then we'll get them in to go in, steal the door, bring the door back. We'll then install the door. We now have a door on our house. <laughs> and we have fomented war at the same time. Okay. Starting a war just to get a door when... I really must stress you have enough money to buy a door. <laughs> like, they are not that pricey. I, I, I know I have enough money. Okay, I approve. Just, I'm just letting you know, just in case you think that doors are beyond your ability to purchase right now, that you do have enough money to buy a door, that's fine. But okay, yeah, you've decided, you've chosen violence. You woke up this morning and you chose violence. Okay, that's absolutely fine. fine. To be fair, we woke up many, many ones ago. And True. Yeah. We turned in cho choosing violence. <laughs> we dreamed of violence. We woke up uh, and plotted more violence. Okay, that's fair. It's a very violence orientated group. Yeah. That's, I, will say, that's I will say that I am carrying on my back a character who has tried to murder the other two characters in this members of this party at least once. Mm, that is true. It was mutual. <laughs> Okay, so, the mime, you're heading out. Is anyone else going with the mime? I'll go. That way I have, like, we have, like, an escape plan. Sounds reasonable. I... I'll stay back and... Hey, maybe so... I'll dispose of the body. <laughs> I'm going to see if there's any more barrel. Okay. Um, I mean, right, if you could so... find a more convenient container for 300 wands, you could have the, wa the wand barrel. Then how are we going to cut the wands to sell them to people? Well, carry them in a smaller crate. They're wands. <laughs> While you're there, consider what I need anyway. Steal a cart. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to need to cart the door. Uh, well, I mean, Belladonna is extremely strong. <laughs> Just like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, forgot, I, forgot I, I am, I am leaving the wand barrel behind, but I am taking with me the, the shrapnel wand. Just in case... Okay, so question: mm. When we're hanging out at the um, ale house, would you say we spent an hour in the company of the person I'm impersonating? With Uncle Gianni? Yeah, I reckon so. Oh no, yeah. no, you didn't. The reason you didn't is none of you went out to do the axe throwing, and that's where Uncle Gianni was. <laughs> but the only person who could probably even partially pretend to be Gianni is Shiny. What I will allow you to do. Instead, you can choose to impersonate any of the other dwarves, right? To anyone who's met a dwarf uh, from the Mafia, it'll probably be close enough. To anyone who's met Uncle Gianni, they might not buy it. But yeah, no, you only spent like four rounds of combat with Uncle Gianni, which is about 20 seconds. Not quite an hour. Not 20 seconds, but 20 seconds. Yeah. A very event. Very eventful 20 seconds, but yeah, not not a full hour before. Prime magic early. Yeah. Um, so I'm afraid no. You've you've got to have played the G the, the the games the DM worked hard to make. God damn it! But no, no. Uh, you can you can impersonate any of the other dwarves uh, who were there. You did play the game. <laughs> Just in the middle of bloody the combat. Um, okay, so you're 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 both on your way. It's going to take about five hours to get there. Um. Actually, no, it's only five miles. It's only going to take five hours. It's going to take about two hours to get there, I'd say. Um, just, as a, just as a heads up, I, I, I just want to... Just so I'm not surprising you with this, Iris. Um, a World War II howitzer uh, shell. If you're inside a building, you're still going to get hurt. I just I just want to stress this. Like they're, they're, they're designed to destroy buildings as well. I mean, to be fair, that they're designed to destroy buildings when they hit the building. This explodes 50 meters up you said oh that's true no yeah that's that's a fair point that's a fair point it does it does that's okay then yeah all right okay so you're you're on your way you're on your way to to the town of hold on a second while i get you a random stupid fucking town name uh and i literally do this by opening google maps going to the west country zooming in and finding something dumb okay you are going to melbury samford um and uh, yeah it's it's a nice little town it's small it's ringed with um a, quite a recent sort of uh palisade wall 
And inside, I, there's a few uh, wooden buildings, and uh, you can see a, a church is under construction. I have an important question. Mm -hmm. Because this is something that was only ever brought up, like, back during the initial world creation streams and stuff. Do Tabaxi still have Texan accents? Are yes. they still cowboys? Yes. Okay. Good. I mean, you've, you've, you've met one. It wasn't just in the world building screen, stream. Your political rival, uh, as Ao, is a tabaxi. Amos oh, Davis yeah. Dupree is not a name I would normally give to anyone else, I think. <laughs> Alas, the mime is mute, so I would not be impersonating it. Uh, wait, no, I'd be, would have been impersonating his dwarven accent anyway. Never mind. Yeah. No, wait, wait I can still, I'll, I might be using message on someone, so. Yeah, that's true. It's going to be great. You can know my pain, finally. <laughs> Anyone who's um, seen my Phoenix Wright streams know I should not be allowed to do seven American accents of any sort. <laughs> that doesn't stop me. Okay, so you, you arrive at... Yeah, I don't know what you're getting into. <laughs> you arrive at the at the Palisade Wall and in front there's a, there's a gate. It's wide open um, and there's two tabaxi guards. They look a bit old, they look a bit tired, leaning against the wall, just sort of... They're, they're both uh, chewing a bit of hay. Chewing a bit of straw, and just looking out and watching people move past, just with an eye on them, really, in general. Are you okay. disguised right now, or are you disguising in the city? Um, I just sort of uh, put the disguise on as we're approaching, because obviously it only lasts an hour, so I don't want to, it to run out on the way there. Well, I had a darling's business or pleasure. Uh, and I just business. sort of act very haughty and walk straight past them with my nose up. Okay, there's a pike right in front of you now. I say, business or pleasure. Uh, we're, we're we're here on business. I am with I am with the uh, with the he with headquarters up at Paris. Sir. I'm here to investigate some allegations of let's just say abuse from the local guard. Not of this town, of your neighboring town. I came here looking for some possible witnesses. Well, and you check the town over. I mean, they're going to be the ones who've seen it. The, none of them are talking. Mm. However, I do notice that they have a sort of amnesty towards the people here. Well, there a bit of a feud going on between the two criminal gangs. We got one here that we're doing our best to root out, but you know what criminal gangs are like? They, they get in everywhere. They get in under your skin. Uh, I hear I, it's even I worse understand. up in the mountain where they got the Yakuza. Giant minotaur men uh, taking over, taking control of the whole place. What is this world coming to? Mm, terrible stuff. Just be careful. Do not wear red in here if you can. Oh, oh, we won't. And I'll be, and I'll be keeping a close eye on my partner, who is very, who is very much working with me against them. So do not worry. All right, good. Because as much as I like to do my job and I like to keep people safe, there's only so much I can do. When the no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> my brain was like. Do a version of the Crips, but about cats, right? And my brain went the nips. <laughs> and like, wait, no. <laughs> I'm not like catnip, right? But it's just nipples. Uh, so it's like, <laughs> uh, the uh, <laughs> pussy squashing. No, that's worse. Um, I should have thought of something for this, but you know what? We're, we're just going to the claws. The claws are out, and they are terrifying. We, we, we will keep our heads down. Our head down. Chat have gotten the joke. I love it. <laughs> it was a very good joke. All right, both of you, both kind of you, be careful I, now. Yeah. <laughs> kind of wish I could give the DM inspiration. <laughs> that just means I spawn in like an avatar of death. You don't want that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we've got the deck of many things, so <laughs> you could get an avatar of death very soon. Yeah. Obviously, we summon another avatar of death and have them duke it out for our souls. I'm just Look, assuming this one. conversation is happening right in front of the two guards are like... No, this is, no, this is out of character. So what now, Darren? <laughs> avatar of death Pokemon. Wait, that's just a no, gathering. Have, this is a greater deck, so just let me know when we do go through it. If it, it is indeed is a greater a deck. deck. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. So... Use uh -huh. it shred Okay, but yeah. So we'll go in and we'll and I'll find the nearest door store or carpentry store, I suppose. <laughs> Surely we need to rob the church. 
It's currently being Ooh. built. They probably don't have many riches there, but you might be able to steal some stones. Or oh, actually, honestly, they might have some doors lying around. That That's possible. <laughs> We need to try to steal the door from the church. They'll be furious. No, more than the door. We need to steal the door and the stained glass windows. <laughs> I was out of character, by the way. The mime oh, is God. walking. No, wait, they were saying this through gestures. Through ge <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interpretive Just dance. Through interpretive mime. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so our, I think our first, our first goal is we need to locate a cart. Preferably one that'll be near the church and relatively easy to access. Okay, so you've, your best bet is probably to go to the church first and see what's there. <coughs> oh, um, yeah. So yeah, it's a short walk. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to find a church. Churches are usually the tallest building in any place. Uh, this is a church to... Lollis, the Silver Betrayer. So this is a church to the Silver Betrayer. Um, the unusual thing about it is there are a lot of mirrors around. Um, and they're sort of being installed. The, the they don't have stained glass windows as much as they have mirrors, giant mirrors. Uh, it gets very it gets to be a big big problem in hotter places where the sun's out a lot. A lot of buildings burn down, but you know it just it's just how it works. Um, loads of mirrors, and there are several carts here unloading various building supplies, including like huge timber beams, loads of bricks, and uh, this one full of mirrors as well. Um, there are... <laughs> you know what, there's one that has 16 doors in it. <laughs> I uh, wander around the place, uh, just looking very foreseen. Like, yeah. Just being, just doing my best to sort of irritate people without actually act actively pissing anyone off. Okay, um, you're a mime, so I think you are you are succeeding to irritate people. Um, I don't think I need yeah, a role for that. Just, That's I, an innate that's ability. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh yeah, you're doing it. It's it. Miming is a dwarf. Yeah. Okay, Uncle Gianni. <laughs> okay, so while well, while the mime is out irritating people. I'm going to do my best to inconspicuously kind of approach the the cart with the door. Okay, roll me. How how are you inconspicuous? Are you like trying to stick to shadows and that sort of thing, or are you just trying to sort of pretend, like, act as if you you belong here and you you should be here? I'm basically going. Am I getting a deception or stealth from you, basically? The general idea is just like walk walk around the place. So I get to. At least somewhat close without entering the thing. Okay. And then where I think people are relatively distracted with other construction tasks, walk up to it. Okay, I'll take a stealth on that one then. You're fine for walking around it. That's no problem. It's just the approach. I feel like yeah. it's a, a stealthy eye that uh, that spots that. I mean, I could have taken perception, but I, I think stealth makes sense on this one. That is a plus one, so 12. 12. I think that's enough, yeah. Um, people aren't particularly on high alert or anything like that. Um, the place is sort of being, as you walked around, you did notice the place is sort of being watched over by uh, several groups of tabaxi wearing blue. Um, and they're, I, maybe they're involved in this deal to build a church. Maybe this is some sort of uh, money laundering operation or something like that. Construction is a great way to launder dirty money. Uh, so it could be something like that. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, you you get to you get to the cart with no problems. There is no horse attached mm -hmm. to it at the moment, but there is a cart and it's full of heavy doors. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my still rolled up uh, rug and tie the horse hitching part to it to the end of it. It's like at a moment okay. I can activate the rug I and like it'll, that. it'll unroll. I like that. Okay. Meanwhile, what's happening over with shinies? <clears throat> you know, considering shinies is bored, they're gonna start trying to play a game of solitaire. Have you even oh, have you even tried to dispose of a body yet? <laughs> I thought that was a given. Well, not necessarily. I'm waiting, I'm, waiting, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for them to get back with the cards. So oh, that was it. Once in the cart, and I can put the body in the barrel. That okay. How many cards are you drawing? I'm just going to draw two. Okay. So I've got to work out a way of transferring this into standard cards. Or do you have a tarot uh, uh, deck? No, no, uh, no, but the hand, uh, the actual 
bit four deck of many things has a one-to-one for the cards. Well, excellent. That, which is why I sent you that message about the fives. Ah, got you. Because oh, I up. don't have jokers in this deck. Okay, so first card is King of Hearts, which is Throne. Yeah. Throne. Okay, so Throne, you gain perf- proficiency in the persuasion skill and you double your proficiency bonus on checks made with that skill. In addition, you gain rightful ownership of a small keep somewhere in the world. However, the keep is currently in the hands of monsters, which you must clear out before you can claim the keep as yours. I will remember that. And the Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades is... (laughs) Okay, I'm going to need a new character sheet. Thank you very much. You disappear and become entombed in a state of suspended animation in an extra-dimensional sphere. Everything you were wearing and carrying stays behind in the space you occupied when you disappeared. You remain imprisoned until you are found and removed from the sphere. You can't be located by any divination magic, but a wish spell can reveal the location of your prison and you draw no more cards. Recipe yeah, shiny. That is fine. I will still leave this on the side. Yep. Because the others might take cards. So when when you get back, shinies is gone and the deck is just there. <laughs> oh, quickly re-roll a new character. Yep. I, I'm so, so I'm so, so, so sorry. <laughs> you gained a kingdom and then immediately <laughs> sent I, I to a prison this gives dimension. Me a chance to make a new character to uh. Things I, ha- I have a question because because uh, shinies gained ownership. Does that mean like the deed appeared? Uh, no, they they have an innate ownership. It will now pass to whoever is their next of kin, mm. which is not you two, <laughs> unless you two want to try and pretend that you are shinies to get control of the keep, which you know you, you have the skills. So you spend an hour can, with shinies. Without the, the body. Um, no one can hear this, but I really want to describe this scene because we're a few hours in now, and I'm saying it's approximately 24 hours since you uh, defeated the uh, the undead that was Bully Chesterton, and suddenly you hear, Hi! Bully Chesterton here, wondering exactly why he can't feel his arms or legs. What is going on? I can't see too much. I appear to be lying down on a slab. Perhaps I've lost the feeling in them and I will wake up soon enough. Uh, But I'll just, I'll just stay here, keep talking until someone comes and helps me. I'm sure it will only be a matter of time. Uh, I, I simply must destroy the mime and the rabbit. Oh, this is going to get interesting because that means the mime and the rabbit can carry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, so for the next like, uh, I'm going to say probably the next four hours or so until you get back. I'm assuming it's going to take that long for you to get back once you've got the cart. Assuming you get the cart and all that's fine. Uh, Bully is going to be just constantly talking. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the mime's still doing the dwarven mime thing, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, I feel like this will be as good of a time as any. I'm going to wait till there are at least some of the, uh, of the tabaxi wearing blue walking around, but not like ones, not like at a distance that could immediately reach me. Hmm. And the moment I, I feel like that time is right, I'll save the command word to activate the, the, the flying carpet. And yell, we sell in your doors and your gabagool. <laughs> and start taking off. I'm going to drive it by the mine so the mine could attempt to jump on. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I need, I need to stress the tabaxi are not eating gabagool. Uh, they have gumbo. They've got. Um, they're, not, they're, they're deep south area in general, so they're like a full amalgamation. So they've got gumbo going on, they've got steaks, they've got, you know, it's the full, full south, not South American, but southern, uh, southern United okay. States. Th- uh, then in that case, I'll, I'll change it from gabagool to gumbo. Yeah. <laughs> I've got your gumbo. All right. And yeah, you're, you're going to be starting. No, I, no, we don't have your gumbo. We spilled all your we gumbo. We spilled your gumbo. Okay, yes. Uh, that sounds. And I'll good. drive by. The, I'll drive by the mime, so the mime has a chance to get on. Okay. Yeah, do you I'm have any on. vehicle proficiencies? <laughs> I, Nilks does. Okay, so you don't have vehicle proficiency. 
I'm going to say then, can I get a... So this is for the bit where you're trying to trying to pick up the mime, basically. Uh, can, what the hell kind of check do I ask for this? Can I... <laughs> can I get a strength... Um, <laughs> A strength check, please, to control the cart, basically, so that you don't power into the mine. <laughs> I thank you for that. I am actually very good at strength. That's the uh, 18. That's great. You're you're on target, right? Mime, I'm going to need an acrobatics check to get on uh, without you know falling flat on your face. Okay, that's a plus three. That's not too bad. Uh... I'd like to use my inspiration on this. <laughs> we'll go for it. Because <laughs> I'm going to guess a seven doesn't, won't do it. Oh, it'd be funny though. <laughs> okay, that's a uh, eighteen. Yeah, you're on. You're fine, which is good. You're not left in the mud being murdered by <laughs> by basically a gang. <laughs> while Bellatonic uh, just leaves. As we fly dogs. away, I'm I uh, I'm going to cast vicious mockery at the nearest tabaxi. And they're going to hear, mm. and instead of their own voice, it's going to obviously be um, an Italian dwarf accent. <laughs> and it's going to be, your mama's gumbo sucks. <laughs> so Vicious Mockery is and a you know wisdom save, I think? You know what? I'm yeah. also going to use my final only a 12. Uh, spell slot. I'll use my final spell slot I have to cast chromat Chromatic Orb Fire at the church. Oh, damn. Do you have the materials for Chromatic Orb? Oh, you just found a diamond, yeah. didn't you? I also got one that first time as well. Oh, you did? Okay, so you're going to cast Chromatic Orb. Specifically, I'm going to aim as at as many mirrors as I can. I love it. What's the save again? <clears throat> the save was... Oh, you don't have to do the save. I, I had to do the save. Yeah. Uh, oh, I rolled a 12. Uh, so I don't... Depending uh, on what your yeah. spell save DC is. Yeah. My spell save is literally 12, so I think that passes. Oh, damn, we've got to improve yeah. your spell save, DC. Um, okay, so uh, I think that's a, a pass and they get nothing for Vicious Mockery because it's a yeah low-level spell. But they still hear it, so they're still angry. They just don't take any damage. Uh, okay, so what damage type are you going to use for your Chromatic Orb? Uh, fire. Okay, make me a ranged spell attack, please. This is basically determining if you hit a mirror or if you just hit the building. Uh, that is a 12. 12? Yeah, you hit a mirror. Um, and it goes, -dum -dum. <laughs> and <laughs> so it hits the mirror and then it just bounces straight into um, one of the one of the workers who collapses. The worker was holding a rope um, and the rope was and a crane drops holding uh, about a ton of bricks. Um, and it just the whole thing just collapses down uh, makes a, a, a loud fud and everyone's looking at that now as well there's a huge distraction going on um, that has unfortunately gone into uh, the crate of mirrors so all those mirrors are broken everyone has extremely <laughs> bad luck right now um, but yeah you're off <laughs> beasting it down the street we are in a very loud magic carpet <laughs> stealing a bunch of doors yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the battle music now because there are guards in the street and they've heard a commotion and they are seeing you zipping away on a cart. They know you didn't arrive in and they have crossbows. Uh, because what guard doesn't have a crossbow, to be quite honest? So they're going to take an attack at you. Actually, you know what? They're not going to take an attack at you. No, uh, we're not going to bother rolling initiative on this because they're going to do one attempt and then you'll be past them, I reckon. Make me dexterity saves, each of you, to try and sort of duck and hide out of the way of it. I'm good at death fit. Well, I'm not good, but like, if I fail, I can still technically pass. Uh, I'm basically treating this as like a cloud of arrows, which is neat. Or bolts, more accurately. 14's good. You duck to the side as bolts go do 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 along the side of the uh, side of the car. The mime, how did you do? 11. 11's not good. You're gonna get hit. Uh, so you jump to the side, but oh, no, well, actually, that's all right because that's two ones there. Um, so that is six points of piercing damage uh, that come in, which is not bad for 3d8. I'll tell you that. Um, 
six points of piercing as yeah you get struck with a bolt uh hits the back of your back of your leg um goes through the knee your adventuring days are over and uh yeah so the cart's going and beasts through gets through the gates just as the two tabaxi who was sort of uh, I, leaning I, against as the thing going through like, the gates, i'm a, i'm a scream back <laughs> i'm gonna use my um one of my uh, now that there ain't right that uh, power to heal on myself in with a second level slot okay i did not know you had power word heal neat that's a ninth level spell where did you get that from power uh healing word <laughs> okay i was gonna say you know, I was like, Man. hang on a minute <laughs> Like, there's a problem here, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> My attempts to bluff with Power. a different character sheet have failed. Power <laughs> word. Rule breaking. <laughs> Healing word, okay. Power word, I Power simply word. decide I have ninth level spells. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Power word, I bought the, bit, I bought the DM pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would work. I'd, I'd give you a free wish uh, if anyone buys me pizza. That's that's how that works. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can you can heal up. You can do that while you're clattering along. So as you get past the gates, the two tabaxi who are sort of uh, standing on either side of it, they just look out. Chewing again on the uh, on the on the bit of straw, and they're like, mm, "That ain't right." <laughs> oh well, no chance we're catching them. <laughs> they just hey. lean back again. <laughs> okay, and I think you're going to make it back pretty quick, actually, with the the carpet pulling it. So I think it's going to be two hours, and you come back, and as you get to what used to be the door you can hear a voice, and it's a familiar voice, and it fills you with a sense of dread. It's like, hello there, is anyone out there who can render some assistance to I, Bully Chesterton? I'm going to stand in the doorway. I don't know if Bully can see the doorway or not, but I'm going to stand it ominously, my shadow pouring Bully into the Bully will see room. your shadow go across and go, ah, you must be a friend here to assist me. That's <laughs> Bully. fantastic. Bully, wait, I recognize that voice. Hold on a minute! You're the rabbit! Come over here so I can bite your face off! I cast, um, Bully, but as a message. <laughs> you just hear Bully, you. he goes, Bully! <laughs> I just keep doing that. Bully! <laughs> bully! But seriously, I'm, I'm come over here! Help me up! I can't I'm, feel my I'm, legs! Uh, yeah, there's a slight problem there. I pick Bully up by the head and I turn his head downward. Well, that's unusual. I appear to have been made invisible. Can you please dispel the invisibility on me? It's quite impressive you saw it, now I think about it. Bully, you don't have a body. I what? You don't have a body. Well, that's not good. How am I meant to kill you without You're a body? Well, but, but, but that's my job. I have to kill you. Bully, I don't know how to tell you this. And it pains me to have to tell you this of all people. You've lost. Bully! Uh, just because he heard his own name. Um, listen, do me a favor. I have a secret to tell you. Can you just put me right up next to your ear for a sec? <laughs> oh, don't worry. You can just whisper it. I have good hearing. No, no, no. I can't have anyone else here. This is very important that I get very close to your face. Mm. Bully has I'm, such I'm, secrets I'm... to tell you from beyond the grave. <laughs> you know what, Bully? I'll do it if you could beat me in an arm wrestling competition. That sounds good. Get me an arm and I'll beat you. Oh, sorry. You have to provide your own. Well, that's not particularly helpful. All right. Failing that, if you don't want to hear the extremely exciting secret that Bully Chesterton has to tell you, can you do me a favor and utterly destroy this head? Just set fire to me. I don't think I will. Please. No. But Bully must murder you. At <laughs> this point, Bully. the uh, mime takes out a marker pen or whatever the medieval equivalent is, you know, just like a brush or something, and just paints rabbit a rabbit nose on him. Bully's not too happy about that. You could have used Knowles' magical pigments and literally given him a rabbit nose. Uh, <laughs> Bully is I not too I'm happy mad. about this situation. <laughs> Look, Bully, we have a lot of work to do. We have to install a new door that we just stole. I can help Here, you with that. Why don't you, I put Bully down on the floor, have a conversation with Nilks here. I put Nilks in front of him. He's going to just keep rolling around on the floor until until he sees Nilks. He's like, hello, I'm Bully. 
great to meet you, and I'm sure it's likewise. Hello? The Oh, don't worry. He, he's a bit shy, but he's a great listener. Just feel free to tell him anything. This is a ruse, isn't it? This is a dead body. It's not. Here. And I, I kind of put his forehead near next to Nilk so he could feel the pulse. Well, that is unusual. Now, I tell you what. I tell you what. Thank you for finding me this friend. But do you know what you need to do right now? What is it, Bull? You need to either kill yourself or me. Okay, but my neighbor is probably you, calling the police right now. Uh, <laughs> if I kill you, doesn't that just mean you come back later? Nonsense! That wouldn't happen at all. Would Bully lie to you? Yes. Nonsense! You know, I'm I'll Bully Chesterton, Archon of I'll Truth. Just leave, I'll just leave you here with no. D don't! Come wait, on! No! Come on, man, we gotta install a door. No, wait! Um, Come back um, here so I can bite your knees off! Uh, as the mime's walking away, they uh, cast Suggestion... Uh, not Suggestion, can't do Suggestion yet. Again. Um, <laughs> they cast Message, and Bully hears in his own voice, but maybe that will fall... He won't be fooled, he'll still be fooled. Hello, I am Nilks the Kobold. Well, that's unusual! <laughs> There is a great way you can kill the mine. All you have to do is find a way to give, make sure they acquire a huge amount of gold. It will destroy them. Perfect. I'll help them acquire a huge amount of gold. Bully Chester knows money and knows financial security. <laughs> you there. But yeah, well... Over there, from putting up the door, I've got some secrets to tell you about s secure pension plans and investing for your future. Now come over here so I can bite your face off. <laughs> how, how do I get the door and you get the... whatever that nonsense is? <laughs> oh, meanwhile, by the way, I need to be clear, you probably have noticed by now that Shinies is gone. <laughs> like... The mime hasn't. I mean, they would have <laughs> definitely noticed I was uh, gone because all of my stuff was together, including my clothing. And nine uh, plasma pieces. Yeah, I, just I'm sorry. Uh, nine platinum pieces and twenty-five gold. I think you'll find. I think you'll find that is four platinum pieces. Here we get here. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll get, I'll get to work putting up the door. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's what Shinies would have wanted. Yeah, I, I'm not going to... You don't have to roll for putting up a door, that's fine. Um, yeah, so... Ha have you finished rolling a character, uh, Leggy? How, how's it going? What, what have you what have you rolled up? Just so I'm I can rehydrate after being to roll for up. like 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm trying to roll a... Uh, or Goblin. That sounds good. <laughs> a what goblin? A spore druid. Ooh. Oh, yeah. the Tash is um, druid subclass. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, no, that is... No, Circle that's, of Spores uh, is... Book, I think. Oh. I thought it was Tash's. Yeah, Tash's. Yeah, I thought Tash's was born oh, no, wild. in Tash's. Yeah, Spores and Wildfire. Wildfire is great, as you've already seen, yeah. but Spores is pretty cool too. Like, they're yeah. both really good. I'm just good. having to... Uh, Boot up Aurora again because uh... yeah, it's fair. So <laughs> I, I think I think we've had we've had a rather productive day. We murdered a pe we murdered a few people. We murdered another guy. We stole some doors and cemented the seeds for war. You've given a town probably eighty-one years of bad luck. We continue to torment someone we killed the entire family of, mm. and killed them twice. <laughs> Do you want? I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to find one, like one of those fancy display cases, and put Bully's head neatly on top of it, <laughs> just so he's comfortable. He's in there. He's like, "Thank you for giving me a better view of the room. Now I can truly plot your demise. Do me a favor, will you, and just stand right put, over I there? The now, I one of you, please drop the it. chandelier on the <laughs> on the rabbit folk, please." Uh, the mime starts doing a mime. <laughs> and my mouth, Beverly. 
Bully has never been this upset in his entire life, and Bully stabbed his own friend to death. Yeah, I, and I'm the one who convinced you to do that. You did what? Oh, I thought you knew that part. You did what? I convinced you to stab your friend to death. <laughs> Um, how's he going to react to that? Because you cast a spell on him to do it. Uh, so I've been playing uh, the, that he the did not know. The spell I cast, all it did was imprint some, my, some of my thoughts, which would have been my voice, into his head. Oh, okay. So yeah, he does know. You fiend, come here at once. Your honor demands it that you face me in combat right now so I can bite your face off. I think I think you have one thing uh, wrong about me. You're assuming I have honor. Damn and blast! You there, the mime. Do me a favor. When this rabbit foe goes to sleep, put me on her pillow so that by the time she wakes up in the morning, she has no face. I'll give you all of my money. I have a lot. I've inherited it since you murdered my parents. I mean... You have none of it because you were murdered as well. Nonsense. I'm <laughs> sure I can still access it. Oh, no. The money's been redistributed to the people of the of the town. Communism won't last and I'll see to it. Once you get me a new body and I bite your faces off. Okay, so the mime is technically now in trances. So when they uh, rest tonight, they are literally just going to trance, holding the head, literally just too far away from Belladonna to him to actually reach. <laughs> Bully's going to be shouting throughout the night, you're not going to sleep well, I'll say that. <laughs> Get me closer so that I can bite their face off. It's just I that one with my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> you know that joke about eating a giant marshmallow? It's going to be like that. I suppose awesome. once I... If, if we're going on to the next day, when I wake up, I'm going to make a makeshift gag for Bully. <laughs> okay, yeah, that that sounds good. Okay, so you've got a door. I, I I'm still in combat mode, so I'm going back to adventure music. You got you got a door. You've got a you've got a house. You've got a you know you've got a stronghold basically. So you can now use this for a base of operations from which to launch your nefarious deeds and also defend yourselves should you be attacked. Uh, which is great. Mm. And I think, actually, we might end this here. Uh, not least because it will give Leggy longer to do character creation, but also because I I can't think of where you might possibly mm. want to go next. I'm going to have to do a, a whole other plot thing. I thought the 300 Wands thing would last a bit longer than you just killing the owner of the Wands, but there we go. That's I mean, I, suppo I suppose the next arc can totally... Well, well, once we return to the evil campaign, can totally be the war between these two downs. Yeah, that, that'll be very interesting.